Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to invite Dr. Calestus Juma to deliver the convocation address. Chancellor Steinberg, Chair of the Board Corbett, Principal and Vice Chancellor Monroe Bloom. It's a great honor for me to be back in Montreal and I'm deeply honored also to be inducted into the family of this university. It feels very much like being back at home. Uh, I have a long association with Canada that goes back uh, to the 1970s, late 1970s, uh, when I worked on a, a grant funded by the Canadian International Development Agency, CEDA. Uh, later on, I was very privileged and lucky uh, to receive a scholarship from the International Development Research Center, IDRC, that supported my graduate studies in the United Kingdom. Uh, later on, I would find myself being employed by the United Nations, who, which was at that time the Agency on Environment, which was at that time headed by Elizabeth Dowdswell, again another Canadian. The secretariat of that organization was then in Geneva and subsequently got relocated uh, to Montreal. So when I arrived in Montreal, I didn't have the benefit of having staff with me, and I, but I was fortunate enough to establish connections with this campus. And so much of my work in the early, the beginnings of the United Nations Convention Secretariat in Montreal, uh, the beginning of 1996, uh, was in, funded, in fact funded and supported by this university. And that really reinforces my appreciation to be able to be back here uh, and to be part of the community. When I look back to the days when I first arrived in Montreal and started to associate with McGill University, uh, one message really stands out, and that is the importance of remaining optimistic, especially in light of controversies and challenges. 1996 was particularly important because it was the first year that genetically modified crops or transgenic crops were first introduced. The convention I was heading was responsible for helping governments around the world arrive at some kind of consensus on whether these crops were likely to be beneficial or harmful to the environment, and the world was divided. Uh, what I recollect from that period is that many people argued that in fact these crops will have no significant impact uh, for developing countries, no contributions to developing countries, and secondly, that they were likely to be catastrophic for the environment. And another group argued that they might benefit developing countries and they might help the environment. And my job was to try to help governments arrive at a compromise. It was difficult to develop a compromise of that kind without evidence. It's now 17 years later, the evidence is starting to be very clear. As of last year, nearly 52% of the hectareage of genetically modified crops was in developing countries. Uh, these crops have added nearly $100 billion to global agriculture. More than half of that has accrued to developing countries and mostly to small-scale farmers. Uh, we have not seen the catastrophic ecological impacts that had been predicted then, but we acknowledge that there are still environmental concerns that need to be addressed. And when I look back, if, men, if people had not maintained a certain level of optimism that there might be benefits arrive, uh, accruing from these technologies, uh, in fact, they would have abandoned that technology uh, altogether right from the beginning. 
And so anybody who is going to be working in agriculture in the next 10, 20, 30 years has to be prepared for even bigger debates because global challenges in agriculture are getting more compounded. Uh, but there are also greater opportunities to apply new technologies, which means that there will be similar debates, uh, not just on biotechnology, but in other areas. We've seen greater application of satellite technology to agriculture, but they also raise new policy issues related to uh, privacy and confidentiality. Uh, and so graduates of this school, of this university, uh, really would need to be prepared to maintain an optimistic outlook. Uh, I have been working very much, uh, trying to work and collaborate with my African colleagues. And there's a tremendous interest and enthusiasm in helping Africa to be able not only to feed itself, but become a player in global agriculture. Uh, roughly 60% of the arable land available worldwide today uh, is in Africa, which means that that continent uh, is going to continue to become, uh, in fact, a significant player in being able to meet and contribute to the global, global food security. Uh, that means, to a large degree, that Africa is going to have to expand its technical capacity to produce more food, and that's where institutions like McGill really become really important as, as long-term partners uh, of African inst institutions and universities in helping it not only to meet uh, its food needs, but also becoming a global player. So I'm here essentially to extend uh, my invitation to all of you and to the university particularly to work with us in Africa to be able to not only to meet Africa's needs, uh, but also to contribute to global food security. And thank you again for having me as a member of this family.